So with this task, <clears throat> we are going to learn about how to use the try-catch exception, which is what real programmers would use to stop us getting the execution errors that we get whenever someone enters a string and we are looking to use an integer. <clears throat> so read through these instructions carefully. I'll show you how our validation works but also doesn't work at the same time, so uh, that's So when we run this, we're only allowed to enter numbers from 0 to 100, so if we enter 101, we get the error or the repetition message asking us to try again. If we go for any negatives, and if we go for decimals, we crash our real numbers. Now the reason for that is, is the line of code here, this casting tool or functionality that allows us to change the input from what the string input into an integer and if it can't change it because it's not actually an integer then it crashes the program. So if you look carefully at the instructions here you'll see there's a few other pieces of code now wrapped around each of those and what we want the program to do is try to execute this line of code and when there's an exception i.e. when there are errors we want it just to say print enter integers only and this time when we run the program if you have fixed your indentation yeah I've got a little space there this one. Just be careful with that. Um, integer from that. So if we try 101 again, obviously it's out of range, minus 10. 0 0.5 crashed our program the last time. You can see this time it triggers the exception. Even we type in strings. it doesn't allow our program to crash the way our previous ones all would. Now, that's how real programmers would test it. And again, typing in erroneous test data, that program now doesn't crash. Whereas all the tasks we've done until now probably would crash. Um, you should add in this part here that allows a float number to be um, entered and validated using the try except block of code. Now I want you to try this next part on your own but I'm going to solve it in the video so what you should do is try one step at a time then watch the video to make sure you got it correctly. So. I am just going to take all the code out for that. In fact, I'll just hide it using comments. So, on to step one. For i in range 0 to 10, so that starts at 0 and runs until 9. Step two. Create and initialize a variable called haggis. So, I guess equals blank. So that's that one. Inside the fix loop, enter code which will ask the user if they like haggis. So we need to store that. Um, so that's actually step three. That's step two. Ask user if they like haggis. Haggis equals um, input to you like haggis. Back to the next. Now, using validation, ensure the user can enter y or n, and we can use the uppercase functionality to simplify this to make our code better. So, um, while haggis is not equal to Case y, and 
know this is a very niche thing, or and I guess it's not equal to n. Well, I guess it's not my um, type n. Um, we want to then ask the user to re-enter that. I'm just going to change the message a little so we can check that that's working. Uh, so let's do a quick test to make sure that's working. So do like haggis, yes, yes, yeah, so that's working. If I do lowercase though, it's not. So you should have in your program the ability to accept lowercase y. That seems to be working fine, so it should ask me the first question a total of 10 times and then do nothing perfect. Now, secondly, create and initialize a variable called total haggis lovers. And there's a hint as to what type of variable and what it should be initialized to. So back in total haggis lovers equals zero because it's a count. We don't know how many like it at the minute, and it's quite possible that it will be zero once the program finishes executing. Um, each time the user enters a Y, we want to count up that vote. Mm, okay, so after the while loop, we've got this valid input, and we can say if haggis at this point equals uppercase Y. Now we may have to add extra code here to convert to uppercase if you've not already done so. And I've got an error here. Comparison is double equals. Then we want to add up. So total haggis lovers, we want to add one more on, but right now this is going to give us a syntax error if I run it. Uh, like haggis, my, uh, my. Or maybe not give us a syntax error at all. Now it should have because um, it should be plus equals, but remember that's the shorthand way of writing Total haggis lovers plus one. So we've got the F part counting up. Now we want to display the total number of people who love haggis. Now I'm going to display it in the wrong place first of all. So I'm going to display it here. Print people who love haggis. Uh, total haggis. Now, it's the wrong place because it's going to tell us every time. You can see here it's displaying one. It's display N a few times, obviously. It won't display anything. Yes, 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 yeah. And you can see there it did ask us 10 times. But we don't want to display the count every time, so if we try unindenting it a bit again, let's see what happens this time. I do like haggis, yes, 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 no, no. So you can see that it tells us the count every single time this time. Whereas if we dedent it one more time so that it's outside the loop, you will now see that one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. There's five people like haggis, so it just totally depends on the requirements of your program whether it's to display during, at which point during, or at the end. So that should help you solve that part. Now, the display the percentage of the people who like haggis, well, that's obviously going to happen at the end. Uh, percentage of people who like haggis. Hmm. So, I'm going to get no help with this one, as that's hopefully a very straightforward task. So let's try and get the float, the real number, sorry, validated using the try catch exception. Let's get the upper case part functioning properly 
uh, on these inputs in two places, remember, to achieve a house point, and a calculation and display of a percentage of people who, out of 10, like haggis.